category. We got Scott Bauer, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy. Great to have you here this morning, Scott. Some fun, a little action. Great to be here. Well, when you kind of combine the headline news and what's happening in tech this morning, TSM earnings around the corner. I mean, this is kind of a sleeper week for the whole AI trade. It's waking up qu it's quick. Oh, yeah. I mean, you talk about, you know, getting hit in the middle of, you know, potentially summer trade here. This is awesome for traders, to be quite honest with you. And everything you and Jeff just discussed, I am on board 100 percent with this is a tricky trade. Uh, you know, going into earnings, yes, I believe they're going to blow the doors off of earnings. I don't think there's anyone that really mm. questions that. It's mm. obviously, you know, what are they going to say given the latest rhetoric out here? Nobody knows that. I actually think this is a wonderful opportunity to take advantage maybe of a little bit of an overreaction to the news that's out there right now. If it weren't for earnings coming out, man, I, I, I'd be, you know, hands up completely bullish about this obviously with earnings tomorrow that can be you know a question mark but i do think this is a, a good opportunity to look for a bit of a recovery i really do so with that being said i am going to sell an iron condor that expires this week i am selling and this has a bullish bias to it i'm selling both the 175 170 put spread and the 190 195 call spread i can collect three dollars maybe even a little bit over that right now so it doesn't give me a lot of room to the downside but i'm doing that intentionally my break even to the downside is 172 my break even to the upside 193. the most i can lose on this oliver if this thing blows out either direction here is two dollars i'm collecting three up front i can only lose two so 172 to 193 at the end of this week, that's my range for break even. I love the opportunity here. And again, if it weren't for earnings tomorrow, I would look for a position that was just completely bullish, where this is a little bit more range bound with a bullish buy. It's pretty, it, it, it's pretty bullish though, right? I mean, like you get, you've got a lot more uh, uh, skew in Root that direction. The upside. Obviously. Yeah, almost mm -hmm. all of it, uh, basically almost all of it. Um, yeah, selling really an at the money or, or at this point, you know, slightly in the money right. put spread. But the premiums here, you know, because of earnings and because of the news, obviously, premiums are, you know, to me, so opportunistic to do something like this. It does seem like taking a bullish stance of any form becomes quite a bit more appealing after today's drop, too, because we just know for a we I mean, we know. I mean, look, you never know anything in markets, I guess, but we know that they're going to post the best growth in uh, you know yeah. a long time. Uh, so that kind of lends itself to more of this kind of buy the dip mentality that you probably want to go into this with after you just got slammed from the highs. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt about it. And you know, it's it's really going to be what are they going to say in reference to the news today? Because if, you know, without the news today, their guidance probably you know blows the doors off anybody. You know what anybody is really thinking. So you know, we'll see what happens. But again, you know, when when things get extremely volatile like this is, it's just a must, in my opinion, to put on a trade where you know what your risk is going ahead. You know, in going into the trade. You have to be risk defined, and I love the opportunity here. All right, yeah. Uh, in uh, what three hundred bucks? Three hundred bucks is what I'm collecting. Yeah. Two hundred bucks is my max loss. Okay. So you know that's one and a half to one. I mean, I yeah, I, I love that. I, I love that. And yes, it is bullish bias to it, so it's not completely symmetrical for a move on either side, but I'm doing that intentionally. Yeah, pretty asymmetric. Um, yeah. The. Uh, uh, if, you know, to think about the earnings and what would have to happen for it to really break down further. I mean, whew, that would be quite a day tomorrow if after this sell off already, TSM still disappoints expectations. Um, then, you know, you, you could be really in for a bloodbath for 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 the tech oh, there's, stuff. Oh, there is no doubt about that. And, you know, if the if there's a big disappointment on the earnings side of things, you know, throwing out the, the news side of things, you can see the other big guys really getting hit, especially NVIDIA. Okay. All right. Uh, generally speaking, so this fits into the market, Scott. Make sure to get a quick thought from you. I mean, NVIDIA trying to hold 119. Taiwan Simi, uh, you here looking at the levels we've been talking about. After what we saw the last week, does this kind of give us the dark side of rotation or give me a quick thought on what we need to see today? Rotation is good. Um, broadening out is good. 
I, I would not abandon this trade right now. I think, you know, the sell-offs that we've seen across the board in Meta and Microsoft and, you know, just pick any of these names here. I'm not saying they can't trickle down a little bit further here. I think it's overdone. All right. Good stuff. Thanks, Scott Bauer. Good Thanks, chat, Oliver. good trade. All right. Fun approach and assessment of the chip makers going into Taiwan Semi. That is a big report.